Good evening, and thanks so much for checking out this video, and thanks so much for doing all the algorithmic stuff that supports the channel. I really appreciate it. Today, I want to talk about some of the effects I use for fretless bass. Here's the dry, uh, unaffected uh, sound from this landing short scale fretless. And if you want to know more about this particular bass, please check out my video uh, about my collection of short scale basses where I go uh, more in depth into what makes this space uh, what it is. So here's the dry, unaffected signal. It's a great sound, but often with fretless, I'm sometimes playing in a duo setting or a trio setting uh, and more often than not, I'm doing the singer-songwriter type, uh, type gig and I want to add a little more depth to the sound of the bass. I'm also looking sometimes to have a more acoustic feel or even an upright feel. So to achieve that, I almost always have a reverb effect um, on. Now, today I'm using my Line 6 Pod Go. I had uh, multiple iterations of pedal boards with whole bunch of different reverbs and octave pedals but due to the weight the inconvenience and power issues I have since gotten rid of all of those pedals uh, and I've gone uh, gone exclusively to the line 6 pod go and I couldn't be happier uh, so let me turn the reverb on and here is the bass with the reverb effect So as you can hear, it really adds a lot more depth to it. So what I'm after is not to sound like I'm playing in a cave. I just want to add a little more kind of three-dimensional character to it. So I have it on a chamber setting uh, with a pretty low mix percentage. So you're still mostly hearing the dry signal, but the extra reverb tail really adds to the three-dimensionalness of the tone. The next uh, effect I tend to use quite a bit is an octave up effect. In the pedal version, I really enjoyed using the Electro Harmonics Pog. Uh, and they have a few different versions of the Pog pedal. Uh, and that pedal tracked really, really well, uh, especially for fretless. Uh, however, since going to the Line 6, I've been using the, the Simple Pitch uh, patch and I go up tw uh, plus 12, so 12 semitones up. And I don't have it set to do the organ sounds or to really have an obvious octave up effect, but I use it uh, with a small mix percentage. Again, just to add a little more uh, kind of upper harmonics and to give uh, you know a bigger body to the sound. Here's with it off. But let's turn the octave up on. Again, it's subtle.
So that extra octave up note, I think, helps bring out the uh, some of the upper harmonics, and it also makes it a little more clear uh, out in the audience. It doesn't sound quite as muddy as a fretless bass with flat wounds possibly can. The next effect is the classic Pino Palladino octave sound. Now, I was born in 1981, so I remember when uh, these Paul Young singles came on on the radio. Uh, and as a kid, you know, this was before YouTube and uh, all that kind of stuff. I heard that really unique bass sound. I had no clue how to make that sound. Um, but now with, you know, all the information that's out there, it's pretty clear that Pino Palladino used the Boss OC2 and that's how he got that effect. Now the OC2 is a unique pedal. Uh, it doesn't track super cleanly, but that's part of the charm. And the OC2 has this very synth-like uh, tone that comes from it that very few other octave pedals actually give you. I've uh, been the owner of the Three Leaf Audio Octave model, which comes incredibly close to an OC2. I've owned an OC5, which was pretty cool. Um, but prices for OC2s now are just insane. Um, so if you're looking for that OC2 sound, the Three Leaf Audio one uh, will probably fit the bill. But currently I'm using the one in the Line 6. That's modeled more after the EBS uh, octave pedal, which is considerably cleaner and less kind of, you know, synthy. But I'll show you the trick that I used with my Line uh, 6. So here is uh, the dry signal. And here's with just the octave. Now that sounds pretty close, but to get it a little synthier, uh, and more importantly, to help me cut through a little more, especially in a live setting, I add the octave up to it uh, to help achieve that sound. So here we go, we're gonna add the octave up. Now it doesn't sound just like an OC2, but it's pretty close. And in a live setting, uh, I think that gets me, uh, you know, in the right ballpark. Let's hear that along to a drum track. Here we go. The next effect for fretless bass, can't go without it, is the chorus sound. Now, everyone wants to copy that Jaco Pastorius uh, tone. He initially, as I understand it, got that tone by using a rack-mounted MXR delay unit and by setting a very, very short delay time uh, and having a 
dry, wet uh, rig, he was able to create that chorusing effect. Within the Lion 6, I'm just going to use run-of-the-mill uh, a chorus modulation pedal. And uh, first of all, I'll show you what the dry sound again is. Now, here's the chorus on. If you're playing slow passages, it really uh, can add to the sound. For instance, So for slow passages, the chorus uh, effect can really be effective on the fretless bass. If we really want to get gnarly, then we can get in the synth bass type effects. And what I really like about using the fretless is you can really use the glissandos as type of a pitch wheel, uh, similar to uh, the key bass or a key synth, and you can get the... Uh, uh, type effect and if you can you can be subtle with a type of vibrato or you can be a little crazy and do several semitones in either direction and that can really add to the effect that is considerably harder to do on a fretted bass because you get the jump in the notes uh, but on a fretless you can really get that pitch wheel type effect there are uh, aren't that many synth bass type uh, effects in the Line 6 pod. Uh, I've made three that seem to work for some of the stuff I do. The, uh, the three sounds I use, uh, here's the first one. Here's one that has more kind of a wah quack to it. In all of these, I like hearing the dry bass mixed in as well, so the effect is not too overbearing. And you can still tell that I'm playing an electric bass. And here's the third one I, uh, I use. So there you go. Those are typically the effects I use on the fretless bass. Let's hear those synth sounds along to a drum track. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Peace. We'll be